Hello boys and girls, it's me, Vince, also known as Pleasant Kirby on the internet, and I've been referred to as the magic content creating equivalent of Hulk Hogan's acting career. What? This week I bring you a brew of epic proportions, a spicy meatball of a deck, another fruit from the loins of labour and love that sit between my legs, put together and brought to maturity and nurtured through the careful mentoring of John the Baptist. What have you asked where John got that nickname from? Well, it's because this one time he killed a man with nothing but a handful of rock salt, sawdust and three uncooked chicken breasts. So let's be real here. You're probably asking yourself, what the fuck is Dragon Ball Bees anyway? Well, it's the hot new contender for best combo deck in modern because it's practically splintered to win. But what is it? Well, the game plan was always to make shit tons of bees, because bees are fun, and whilst Hornet Queen is a thematic inclusion of the deck for the sake of being able to call it a tribal bees deck, the real all-star here is Hornet's Nest. Man, I fucking love me a Hornet's Nest. Now, as we all know, bees make honey, which is super sweet just like this deck, but honey rhymes with money, which is what we will make a lot of thanks to our strategic purchase of Volcano Heli and a Blasphemous Act. Just waiting for this deck to break it big now and take down our GP. Now, as the old saying goes, money is the root of all evil, and thus blasphemy in the eyes of our Lord and Saviour. So as our game plan was always to make up as many bees as possible while still being able to actually kill our opponents the majority of the time, we borrowed a leaf out of a more popular meta deck. So we decided to shoot our creatures for 13 damage with Blasphemous Act, because nothing says unlucky scrub like 13 motherfucking bees. But Blasphemous Act has flavour text from Thalia guiding the Thraven on it. Thalia is on Innistrad. On Innistrad they don't have Dragon Balls because they don't have any dragons as they're a rarity. Unlike Tarkir, where their entire culture is surrounded by and based upon the mythology and history surrounding Dragon Lords. When Salcon Vol messes with the time stream, dragons descend upon the plane as depicted in the format, staple and ship pile cube all-star to send the dragons. Pick up your copies now boys and girls before they rock it up in price after this deck makes its YouTube debut. Now, Descent of the Dragons has no comments on Gatherer. Do you know what other magic card doesn't have any comments on Gatherer? Well, it's not Shivering Meteor. Shivering Meteor is the ball in our Dragon Ball Z pun name. A literal burning ball of cosmic space matter. Some of you might suggest that Descent of the Dragons and the lesser extent Shivering Meteor only made it into the final build of the deck in order to fuel the bizarre deck name, and those of you that would say that are completely and utterly correct. However, John had pitched the idea of playing cards like Crystal Ball to really stretch and drive the point home. I politely and sincerely said, Fuck off, John. So that's the name of the deck, but what is the game plan? Well, it's simple. We make bees. Lots and lots of bees. These bees are either going to ping our opponents to death on entry thanks to impact tremors and perforce, or they'll attack for lethal later on in a horde or a swarm of buzzing death. We enable the production of highly potent weaponized bees by crossbreeding a nest with suitable mate. These matches include Blasphemous Act, Shivin Meteor and Volcano Helion. A big shout out here to Dragonstein's suggestion to try Volcano Helion alongside Stuffy Doll in the Mono Red Tron deck. He served to inspire this feat of magical engineering genius that you see in front of you. But wait a minute. Dragonstein. Dragon. Dragon Ball Z. Dragon. This massive amount of bees can often win the game on their own, but can also kill our opponents thanks to things like Impact Tremors and Perforos. Stuffy Doll serves as redundancy whilst Descent of the Dragon turns bees into Dragon Bees, the second scariest creature known to man just beaten out by Spider Sharks. The deck is rounded out with a suite of early interaction burn spells like Bolt and Roast, and tutors for the creature parts in the form of Court of Calling. Let's blast some bitches with some bees, because bitches love bees! Oh, no, not the bees! Not the bees! I am looking to six and keep the combo in hand, cord filling in for the missing nest. I lead with bird into wall of roots and then impact tremors. My opponent appears to be on some form of red black faithless looting deck, leading with a turn two knight to a sprint into a faithless looting, so I assume Grisha Shell brand. I cord an end step for a nest and then resolve a volcano hellion to make 15 bees. This plus the one trigger from the nest coming into play domes my opponent for 16 damage. Unbelievable, Jeff. In game two, I keep a two lander that is again just missing the nest from going full combo. My my opponent discards Grissabrand to a collective brutality and kills my bird and gets a sneak peek at my hand. This is the correct line and puts us quite far behind. I play some more dorks and draw a cord of calling which puts me in a position to end step a cord for nest and then dome him with my head in on my turn. But a turn 5 kill would be a little bit too slow for modern and he goyos a grizzly bee. He proceeds to combo off, attacking me for 7, he draws a load of cards, uses Nourishing Shoal to gain 11 life by exiling that fucking worm, and then uses a desperate ritual on two seeming spirit guides to cast a Borba Rigmos the Enraged, and proceeds to kill me by throwing lands in my face. Ban the ape! Restless dreams I walked alone, narrow 
I resolve one of my four sideboarded relics on turn one and feel pretty confident about my game three at this stage as I should keep his bullshit under control as I can indulge in my bee related tomfoolery. The game goes on as we make land drops and I make an impact tremors and a hornet's nest. He had a cathartic reunion but doesn't get in there. Turn five I get to cast Volcano Hellion and still keep mana up for my relic. I make an absolute shit ton of bees to dome him to a life turtle where Gristle Brand cannot draw him any cards. He desperately manamorphoses then casts two Faithless Lutians and eventually tries to Goryeo's a Grizzly B. I guess he just hoped it didn't activate it, but my relic rips all graveyards away and leaves Goyos without a target. He uses Nourishing Shoulder to stay alive for one more turn after being attacked by my onslaught of busy bees, but draws nothing and honorably takes his own life through an act to fetch land seppuku. Somebody once told me the world is gonna roll me. I ain't the sharpest tool. In round two, our opponent plays a windswept heath on turn one and I panic for a moment. Is this the mirror? Turns out we're up against Ban Eldrazi. We curve Birds of Paradise into Wall into Nest and then cast a turn 4 Blasphemous Act. But it looks like our opponent is either A, not willing to test his deck against a strange non meta jank pile brew like mine, or B, he's incredibly allergic to digital bees because he concedes the whole game to me. JML, if you're out there and you aren't making shitty adverts for straight to Wilkinson's crap products that no one wants to buy, come forward please and tell me, do you fear the bees? We keep our weakest hand yet, and once again, I'm fearful. Is this the mirror? No, 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 false alarm. It's just bad company or some sort of silliness. I bold ways reflect a mage can serve my life to only to have him resolve a devouted druid. My arsehole clenches whenever I see one of these hit the board. It's unfortunate we burnt our bolt on this. Him being bank colours didn't make me think he'd be on some sort of collected counters deck. We hellion it away disappointingly, which feels super bad. He develops his board further by company into an ewit and getting company back and company again. We have the blasphemous act in hand to really punish an overextension from the green deck like this. However, the card he draws off his cracked horizon canopy in that turn of the combo piece he needs. He proceeds to make infinite mana and calls for Dustwatch Recruiter and then begins to activate Dustwatch Recruiter over and over again. His most likely win con here is Walking Ballista which I should ensure that he's got the Ballista in his deck as a kill spell of choice but don't bother wasting either of our time. I have better things to be doing with my time like making loads of bees. We keep a hand of absolute gas and pray we draw one more land. We bolt the bird and make land drops into impact tremors for our opponent to resolve a druid. And once again I feel bad about the early bolt, but then draw anger and we're forced to wrath away the druid in case he untaps and combos. Our opponent is playing a death and attack as alumni in the form of burn to enforce tender out of the board. We fire off our second anger to get rid of her and have to use a hellion to kill a druid again. Burn to enforce tender can actually blank our hellion, so we had to kill it somehow. With echo trigger on the stack for the hellion we called for a wall of roots to get us closer to going super B Saiyan. Our opponent continues to commit creatures to the board which strangely enough doesn't play around Blasphemous Act. What a scrub. We draw many many Blasphemous Acts and we decide to fire one off early and cleanse the world with fire. He resolves the Knight of the Reliquary which is quite a formidable threat here and we decide to let it hit us because our wall is so important in ramping us to a stage where we can go off. We decide to call for Hornet's Nest in the end step after he casts the second Knight and we get caught out by Unified Will. Something about Unified Will is more embarrassing than any other counter spell in the game. Maybe because I've seen Merfolk players play it and Merfolk is a fucking lame deck. He goes for the combo but in response for the call for two I bolt the druid and feel absolutely fantastic about life. He plays some more creatures and decides not to attack into an open hornet's nest. We untap, cast the big old blasphemous act and create 13 one one flying death touching bees that upon entering the battlefield shoot our opponent for one damage each. You know what they say, the old axiom goes, you can't spell holy shit that's a lot of bees without the letters B, E and E. No, seriously, think about it. You can't spell that sentence without those letters. All jokes aside from it, the deck seems more legitimately competitive than I ever thought it would on paper. It has a combo finish that kind of comes out of nowhere with the chord and end step. A bit like Twin, even though I make that joke a lot, it kind of is in a way. It's a little weak to path, fit or push into a lesser extent lightning bolt, but the surprise factor is certainly on our side. And the combo kills much quicker than they split the 200 carats company does on MTGO, because you don't have to go through the steps, and it looks super fucking cool and immensely satisfying on screen when it goes off. If I were to take this deck to the next level and try and compete with 
with it, I would probably cut the descent of trackings and the balls and the stuffy dolls there unnecessary redundancy and maybe trim a single per for us as well, keeping what allows us to cord for it when we need that part of the combo. I would add one to two more wall of roots, some early token fodder, so dragon fodder, holding our burst or sprout swarm, and look at making the sideboard not shit. As much as Wooden Bellower is a real lad, he fucking sucks in this deck. So what do you think of the video and the deck? Any suggestions or critiques, hit me up in the comment section below. The funniest comment this week, we're going to shout out on my next MTG gameplay video, so let's hear what you've got to say for yourselves, you bunch of filthy little strudels. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe and click that little bell button. Clicking the bell will get you email notifications when I put up stuff like this. It also makes my balls tingle. Please like the video and share it where you can. The more exposure and positive energy I get back, the easier it is to keep up making content. And until next time, remember that a wise and sagely bathroom attendant once told me, no Armani, no Punani, no Splash, no chance for Gash. Put that one in your pipe and smoke it.